In the last video, we left off with this expression. We were dividing the difference of a scalar quantity by a vector. The problem we're considering was to change in potential from going from one equipotential at phi is equal to C1 to another equipotential at phi is equal to C2. So we wanted to answer this question. What does it mean to divide by a vector dr? So to understand this a little bit better, we're going to include a new vector that's perpendicular to our equipotentials. So it goes along here. We'll call this vector n. And it has magnitude l, let's say, and a direction normal to our surface. Okay, so n has magnitude l, direction n hat. And uh, this is perpendicular to our equipotential phi is equal to C1. This we'll consider without loss of generality that it makes an angle theta with our original trajectory, dr. So that means that we can also express the magnitude of our vector as the dot product of the unit normal and the differential path element of our original trajectory. So because this has norm one, we're just left with the norm of our original trajectory times the cosine of theta by the definition of the dot product. Now, because we're looking at equipotentials, it doesn't matter to us whether we take the path from this equipotential to this one along the R, or we take the shortest path defined by our new normal trajectory. Because we're only interested in how our potential energy varies from going to one equipotential to the other. So. Instead of going from one equipotential to the other along our original trajectory dr, we're instead going to move along the path perpendicular to C1. which has length given by this. Okay, remember theta is the angle between our new perpendicular path and our original path between the equipotentials. So that means that our change, oops, our change in equipotential is now equal to the change along the normal
times the length of our path. And this is equivalent because this is the same thing as the dark product of this. This is the same thing. as that. Now, if you remember from our treatment of line integrals, or just from the definition of a change in path, dr is given by a change in the x direction along the vector i hat plus the change in y along the direction of j hat plus generalizing to 3d a change in z along the direction k hat so that means that our change in potential energy taking this dot product is equal to the following. So this expression becomes this. So this is the y component of the change of phi and the n direction in the normal direction times our differential change in x plus the change of phi in the normal direction, the y component of that uh, times the change in y. And then the change of phi in the normal direction, we take the second component of that and multiply it by our change in z along our path. And now the final question we need to answer is how do we calculate these quantities? For example, the derivative of phi with respect to n in the normal uh, direction uh, for the different components. And if you recall from uh, multivariable calculus, so for a multivariable function, let's say f of x, y, and z, the differential of f, so how much f changes, must equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to x times the differential of x, so the change in, in x. Similarly for the other components, so the partial derivative of f with respect to y and the partial derivative of f with respect to z. So, if you compare this expression with our previous one for our potential energy phi, This means that the x component of the normal derivative is equivalent to the partial derivative of phi with respect to x. The y component is equivalent to the partial derivative of y with respect to of phi with respect to y. And the set component was the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. So 
what we're left with is our change in potential energy. Which was given by this is equivalent to this expression. And we're going to define this quantity in brackets as the gradient of phi so it's the normal derivative of our function phi and this is commonly written out like this as well so this is a new operator we called nabla And so the gradient of phi gives you the directional derivative of our function phi. Okay, so because phi was a, was a scalar field, a scalar quantity, the gradient lets us go from a scalar field phi to a vector field given by this. And that means that our change in potential energy to answer a question is given by the gradient of our potential energy function along the path that we chose to take. All right, so to summarize, Uh, the gradient lets you go from what's known as a scalar field. So every point in space has a number associated to it to a vector field where every number has a vector, every point in space has a vector associated to it. The gradient of phi is perpendicular to equipotentials, also sometimes called level surfaces. And it gives you the direction of steepest descent. So if we had taken the path that was, uh, that gives us the most rapid change in the shortest distance, so the path n, that we had talked about before, then we would have found the path of steepest descent. So the magnitude of the gradient, this gives you a measure of the magnitude of change of your scalar field along every point. And as a little side note, If you want to know the gradient along some curve that's parametrized like this, like we saw in the last module, this is given. So the rate of change of phi 
with respect to your parameter u that's encoding the variation of your curve is given by the dot product between the gradient of phi times the derivative of your parametrization with respect to the parameter u. Okay, so if we go back to our graphical representation of this, this was the potential energy landscape that we're considering, the contour plot, and the errors that are drawn on it are the gradient field of our uh, potential energy landscape. And what you'll notice is at every equipotential, the vectors are perpendicular at those points. And it, the gradient is in direction of steepest descent. So over here in the purple and blue, which corresponds to our well, the gradient tells you that if you wanna get out of that, so if you wanna increase in height, you need to go along these directions. And if you're on this side over here with the yellow and orange, the direction of steepest descent, so to get to the peak is along these directions. And in the example we're considering in electrostatics, the directions are flipped because we conveniently, by convention, we add a negative sign to this expression. So it just tells you that the electric field will be in the opposite direction of the steepest descent of your electrostatic potential. Okay, so that concludes our uh, introduction to the gradient. In the next lecture, we'll introduce another vector operator known as the divergence and give a physical interpretation where this is commonly encountered.